France USA is always a really exciting game. They're the best in the world and we want to be beating the best in the world. We want to be up there. We want people chasing us. Ellen White, she only needs one chance. They are born winners and they have that winning mentality. England fall behind to the USA. We're going to have to be at the top of our game to beat them, but the opportunity to get to the top of our game is a very exciting one. Magnificent effort. Oh, what a goal! We have to be really at it when it comes to the start and whistle in the final whistle. Good evening. It's one played, one win for England at the She Believes Cup. Today they face world champions, the USA in Nashville. Well, Alex Scott and Rachel Brown Finnis have a few England caps between them. Join me tonight. Rachel, it's a... Uh, it's going to be important for Phil Neville tonight that England start this game against such a good side the way they started the second half in that opening game. Absolutely. You won't want to have to tear them apart as he did in the half-time in the Brazil game when there were shambles, really, in the first half. Um, second half came out, they changed tactically, but their application of the game plan was sublime in comparison to the first half. And absolutely, they will need to do that, mimic that and some to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the US tonight. Yeah, the US had a draw in their opening game against Japan, so England not getting something from this game will be put them in a really good position. The USA have made just one change. It's a change of goalkeeper. What did you what do you make of this USA team right now? When I look at them in the 2015 and the World Cup, they were a team that was defensively, the organisation was intact. They were hard to break down in every single department. When I look at the USA team that played Japan the other day, there's areas that England can exploit, but it's about them being brave and wanting to take the game to USA instead of being on the back foot. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how England's set up. Let's hear from the man who has that task. England head coach Phil Neville's been speaking to Joe Curry. Well, Phil, you said you wanted to rotate the squads ahead of this game. You've made four changes. How many of them are due to knocks and injuries? How many of them are you tinkering with the side? Well, it was, it was always... Uh, I always planned to play this side for this game. Uh, I wanted to look at a certain formation and certain players in different positions. And, uh, you know, we managed to get everybody through. Uh, we, we did have a few knocks, but it's like I said yesterday in my press conference that everybody wants to play in this game. So it, it, I think it's going to be a great occasion. Uh, we test ourselves against the, the number one team in the world and uh, the girls are looking forward to it. At the end of the last game, we saw you push Lucy Bronze up into midfield. She starts there today. Was that always the plan? Yeah, it was, to be fair. Uh, you know, we, we, we've known probably for a long time. We, we, we worked on it a little bit in Qatar and, uh, you know, Lucy's got great, great qualities in there. So we knew once we'd lost uh, Jade and Jill in midfield that, that, that Lucy could fill in in there and, and it's a good opportunity for Rachel Daly to play at, at right back. And uh, she's been doing so well as a centre forward and as a right winger. And uh, it's another position for uh, Rachel to play. She's, she, she plays against all these players week in, week out in, in the American League. So it's going to be a... A good challenge for her, but one that she's looking forward to. Well, it's an interesting decision from Phil Neville. Lucy Bronze into midfield. She has a phenomenal talent. Absolutely. And you can see what strength she's going to bring to this England team in there. Her mentality is world class. She's a winner, wants to be the best. And actually, she can drive this England team and influence the players around her in that midfield. She was going to bring that energy, which I feel that England were lacking in the first half against Brazil in that position. Well, you could have, uh, you know, could be critical really and say that it's a bit of a last chance saloon or, you know, it's late to bring in a creator, a centre midfielder, when you've lost the likes of Jordan Nobbs, you've not selected the likes of Farrah Williams, who is a ready made replacement. But I do think Lucy Bronze, even at this late stage leading up to World Cup, can do that job and can do it, not just do a job, can be very successful and can be that player to drive out her defence, but also to, she can fulfil her defensive duties as well. Yeah, well, it's going to be a, the biggest test tonight against the USA. It is, but, you know, she's, she's played in the US, uh, she went to college there. She's always wanting to better herself on the pitch as well as off the pitch. You know, she doesn't stand still at any team. She's at City, best team in the league in this country, moved on. Well, let's get the anthem. Sue Smith and Jonathan Please Pierce will bring you all the action. England with the, the first anthem. Of the national anthem of England, followed by the playing of the national anthem of the United States.
Everybody, welcome to a chilly Nashville. I wish I could get a little bit of a country and western twang to the anthems. Not to the England's hopes of winning the tournament for the first time here tonight have been put on hold. Japan's 3 1 victory over Brazil earlier means England can't clinch the title by beating the USA, but a fifth ever victory against the current world champions would put them two points clear of Japan, who they meet on Tuesday. It was a massive boost, of course, in World Cup year if they are to beat the USA. Ellen White there in the picture scored the winning goal against the USA a couple of years ago. Well, the USA make one in force change. Adriana Franch, the National League goalkeeper for the last two years, makes her international debut in place of the regular number one, Lisa Nair. She has a shoulder injury. Davison stays in despite a shaky performance against Japan because the regular centre-back, Sabron, still has a knee problem. Alex Morgan has 99 goals for her country. Three over the years in this competition. One behind Ellen White, the English goal scorer, who holds the record in Sheepley's history. Another four England changes, California-born Karen Bardsley be hoping to atone for the own goal last year that gave the USA their 1-0 win. Rachel Daly on as a sub against Brazil. That allowed Lucy Bronze to push into midfield. She'll be physically stronger than Izzy Christensen in there. That'll be essential against the world champs, according to Phil Neville. Demi Stokes, her first appearance in nearly a year, more defensively minded than Alex Greenwood. And Tony Duggan probably would have started uh, for Karen Carney against uh, Brazil, but for travel delays. Nikita Paris is fit after turning her ankle against the Brazilians. And six of that team are at Manchester City. Bronze and Duggan were there too in the last couple of years. Very Manchester City. Um, base that team so it really is and you know real good quality squad now that Phil Neville has to, to pick from despite injuries despite some being left at home he still has like a, an array of players that he can he can select and, and that's a real positive for, for him in England moving forward referee Karen Apt of the United States of America All the officials come from here of course now, the USA players, you may notice something strange about them. On the back of their shirts, they do not have their own names uh, as part of the uh, Women's uh, History Month uh, and also keeping in, 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 in faith with the main ethos of She Believes, the encouragement of young female talent. Uh, they use the names of icons and influential women to them uh, and they've chosen their icon the iconic names to be on, on, on their back. So you may, for example, uh, see on Tiana Davison's uh, number 12 shirt, uh, the name Rai instead of Davison, and we'll explain those as we go. Beyonce, for example, they just saw Yonce, she's the hero of Mallory Pugh. May or may not agree with it, I'm not too sure what FIFA would make of it, but it's their competition and that's what they've chosen to do. In terms of football, it's a total irrelevance. It's a nightmare for us in the commentary position, but there you go. <laughs> anyway, down below us, wearing 11, is Tony Duggan. Good old Tony wearing 11. And a proper old football number, that, and a proper old football name, and a terrific talent. And she would have played, but uh, she missed a connection due to storms coming in from Spain the other day. One of the England players had a nightmare getting here. But here we are, and the second game sees England in the red and white kicking us off and underway and kicking from right to left in this first half. And the coach, Phil Neville, wants them to be in the faces of the world champions early on. He wants them to be physical. He was impressed with the determination to get back into the game and the quality in the second half. 
against Brazil. They passed the ball quicker, they pressed higher. Didn't like the intensity of England's first half display. And they played standstill football and they had to react rather quickly there. And Stephen got across and just got the ball away as they look to get in behind the two England centre-halves. They're uncomfortable moments in the first game. They did, and that's exactly what USA will, will try and do. They'll try and exploit. They've got so much pace out wide and the centre-forward, Alex Morgan, so they'll be looking for that on a regular basis. Stephen Rapino, one of the World Cup winners for the USA in 2015 in Canada, takes that corner. In it comes, and it's off the line. Brilliant clearance off the line, but it very nearly sneaked in, and England are all over the place early on here. They've eventually scrambled it away, and Ellen White will try and chase it down. But uh, McManus got it away on the line for England and stopped a certain USA goal there. Here's Tobin Heath. She was absolutely devastating in the opening 15 minutes against Japan down the USA right-hand side, wearing 17. That's all the way through, and there's a flag raised anyway against Alex Morgan in the middle. Interesting that in the warm-up, the uh, USA phys uh, physio was looking at her knee. Here we go, the goalkeeper gets nowhere near it, Karen Bardsley, luckily for England. Manchester City defender was there to clear it away. I tell you what, Abby McManus did so well to actually, her positioning was perfect. You could see she's seen the danger and straight away managed to clear her lines, but it looked like Karen Barsley was barged into the back of the goal. She came to come out to, to try and punch it. it looked like there was a, a foul on her. I don't think anyone got a touch in there. Tiana Davison was the was the nearest to it, but I think it swung all the way in from Rapino's. It's a great delivery. It was, yeah. There's uh, Abby Dahl Kemper wearing seven. On her back, you'll see the name Lawrence, her all-time historic female icon is the actress Jennifer Lawrence. Two minutes 20 play, and uh, it's pushed down the line then by the left-back Christian, Christian Dunn, who scored against England in 2016. And they've started very strongly in the USA. It's going to be another corner kick off Steph Horton. And can't get a boot on the ball, so they always do, though. This is exactly how the USA start really, really quick. They're, they're powerful, they're direct, and they just look for those spaces in behind. And very much so, started on the front, front foot exactly as they did against Japan. And they twice led, twice pegged back. And uh, Julie Ertz is there at the near post, just to confuse you more. Uh, that's her, maid, her married name, Ertz. As the cross comes in, it's headed away by Ellen. What you may remember Julie Ertz as Julie Johnson from the World Cup final, but she got married to Zach Ertz, the tight end of the Philly Eagles, and that she has the name of Underwood on her shirt today. It's all confusing. Not too sure it is for Phil, but it certainly is for us up here. <laughs> She's a quality player, though, Julie Ertz. You know, just holding midfielder, can drop into centre-half if she needs to, but her passing range is, is superb. She'll be looking to get on the ball and, and try and dictate the play for the United States. Well, Phil says that he needs to get them more physical, he needs to get them going early on in the game. A brighter start, it hasn't happened here against the top-ranked team in the world. In the possession here with Kelly O'Hara. Mallory Pugh on the right-hand side can play as a, as a right forward. They're really strong on their right, the USA. You've got O'Hara, you've got Pugh, and you've got Tobin Heath. And there is Julie Ertz Underwood on her shirt. Yeah, this was the clearance a little bit late here. And then as it, I think it, it fell back to Demi Stokes after that, and again, it was a little bit late, but that's the intensity that, that America is starting with. They want to press England, they want to stop them playing. Peter Paris looks for Lucy Bronze, and England will look to her constantly in the game. It was well turned away in the end by Rose Lavelle. J.K. Rowling's number on the uh, name on the back of her shirt, the uh, Potter author. And for the Washington Spirit side. Regular this season it is Lavelle. She's only missed one of their internationals. White's heads on, Tony Duggan's in the middle. Cleared away by uh, Dal Kemper. Rapino couldn't get goal side then of uh, Rachel Daly. There's Rapino, who's an iconic figure in her own right in USA football. Uh, she's an activist, she's very, very popular here. 
when the um, when they won an important game in World Cup, there's the coach Jill Ellis who comes from England, born near Portsmouth, in the World Cup 2011, um, in one of the one of the wins there. Megan Rapino got to a pitch side microphone, I remember it very clearly, and sung Born in the USA as a goal celebration, Bruce Springsteen song. Here's Tony Duggan. By Fran Kirby. You know, Walsh in Port for England that Fran Kirby can break between the lines. And Ellen White, second successive start for her, which is great for her. Nikita Paris is in behind and has pulled it back, but look at the blue shirts in that in number. They play a great deal of uh, international football in a calendar year, the USA. Probably as many internationals as uh, a lot of the England squad players will play club games. And here is Mallory Pugh. Right to Tobin Heath. Coming inside. Awareness from Daly, the shot by Rapina. Just squeezed away, and really, England are on the back foot here. Again, it was uh, Daly who got it away. Rachel Daly. Yeah, she does well. Her position in here, but this is great play from from Nikita Paris. You know, she continues a run. Really tenacious from her to, to get that, and then this is the the chance from Rapino. Rachel Daly again, right place, right time. But they're completely on the back foot. Are England? Great start by the USA. It's one of their world champions, Daly trying to, to follow um, her, uh, her uh, target in there. Ah, there's a little bit of an injury struggle here. It's uh, J.K. Rowling who's gone down. It's uh, Rose Lavelle. Um, he made a debut against England in this competition a couple of years ago, actually. Now, I just mentioned that. We were watching them warm up. This is her injury. Yeah, she just but seems to... She twists her ankle, doesn't she? More significant, the USA physio and doctor were really looking at Alex Morgan's knee in yeah. the warm-up. They were. They, it seemed like they were testing to see if everything was OK. She seems to be fine so far, but I think it's worth keeping an eye on. She let us move to the USA when she was a youngster. She was 15. Dad, John, a former Royal Marines commando, was the USA women assistant coach from 2000 onwards then he, I think he went to Trinidad and Tobago after that she's hurt her knee you know JP it looked like she twisted her ankle but as she's twisted she must have twisted her knee just a real awkward fall well she's played a major role this this year this calendar year she's played 14 internationals for them in this calendar year right side midfield left side midfield they've already got a, a problem in there uh, in that um, Another regular, Lindsay Horan, who would be on the left hand side, the Portland Thorns player. She's out of this competition with a quads injury. She'd be the regular on the left, and probably Lavelle will play on the right hand side. That's the way I think it'll be in the World Cup finals. They're not going to change much from this lineup you see in front of us. And I would suggest maybe that Press will come on. She had a little cameo role in the in the first game. Come on for 14 minutes. Yeah, did well, didn't she? She did, she did really well. Yes, I'm sure. I think you can just see the end. Oh, she really does jar a knee. Yeah, from that angle, it's it's you can really see it. Ooh, that's okay for that. well, we'll see if it is Christian Press who will come on. And meanwhile, have possession just momentarily. Squandered there by Lucy Bronze, and here's Rapino. Swung across in, and away through it goes. So popular, back in the hometown of Redding, in California. September the 10th is Megan Rapino Day. <laughs> so back in Birkenhead. <laughs> Which day is Sue Smith Day? It's not yet happened. Or when you go home, do they put the police barriers up so you're not coming back? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> nil nil. England have weathered that opening. Ten minutes. Good to see Demi Stokes back fit in an England shirt again. Yeah, it is. Competition for places there at left backs. Alex Greenwood, I thought she did well against Brazil, particularly in the second half. A delivery. It's fantastic. It's a real positive sign that she's come back on. Come 
to this near side. Pugh has gone to the far. And uh, Pugh's back on this near touch line now. Look. Are they, are they convinced she's going to carry on, Ravel? There's a wily coach, she's uh, Jill Ellis. She, uh, she's been uh, coach of the USA now for nearly 100 games. This is a 92nd to go from Tom Samani. She was the development officer beforehand. Again, like they did against Brazil. You know, the passing has been poor. They get caught in possession. And I know that's something that Phil Neville wanted to do. Make sure in the first half you start strong, your passing's good, it's crisp, and they haven't done that. It's got a shot there of um, Crystal Dunn going through the, the picture. She's from uh, New York State. I think she had an excellent game against Japan. She was often covering in behind, uh, in particular, Davidson, who's the left hand side of the centre back pairing there. She was the shaker of the two. She gave away the first goal. But I didn't think they looked particularly impressive. And I wonder whether the World Cup this summer in France will be won by the team that has the most impressive centre back pairing. In which case, as it stands in the world, with all due respect to England, France are the best in that department. Yeah, we always say this about France. We always think that they're going to do well in the major tournaments and they just seem to not quite be at it for whatever reason. But yeah, if you if you look at the players, player for player, two centre-halves, solid. And yeah, America, when pressed, do look shaky at the back. And we've seen that against Japan, didn't we? Mistakes, particularly from Davidson. It's done. Here's uh, Abidal Kemper in Pennsylvania, raised in California. New title in America this uh, year with the North Carolina Courage. Here's Lucy Bronze who loses out. And then we'll move forward now. It's a poor ball. She's looking for on that far side Rapino. Pressure again by Julia it's in that midfield area. She's only missed one game this this year for the USA. Is huge for them. She moved. She moved forward from centre back in 2017 into a central midfield uh, position. Was immediately named that year on the back of that move footballer of the year. She's quite comfortable to slot back in, and they sometimes they go to a back three, don't they? And the two full backs will push on and, and make wing backs. She's comfortable wherever you play her on the field. Just a very good footballer. Winner in there as well. I remember a face, you know, they've won that World Cup final against Japan. They got off to a blistering start with hat trick and so on and so on. So, but she scored the young goal on her face. It was like her afternoon had been completely yeah. ruined. That's the majority of those players. That's why they are. They are all winners. And again, that's something I think Phil Neville's trying to instill into the England players. It's that belief, isn't it? Belief that you can go out there and beat anybody. He certainly showed that against Brazil, particularly in the second half. Ertz, Nay Johnson, Heath, Morgan and Rapino started the World Cup final. Kelly O'Hara came on. It's Tobin Heath they aim for. Duggan. And Mallory Pugh. 17 years of age when uh, she played an Olympic qualifier. She's 20 now, Pugh. Only 47 internationals for her. One by Daly. He's going to have to step in there. And Ellen White. It was a strong challenge, perhaps a bit clumsy, but... Yeah, that's all it was, just clumsy. She's just trying to help help her midfield out. I know she's clonked Ertz on the back of the head there in the end. I'm not too sure whether that was a foul, you know. It was robust, but nothing... More than that, Juliet's. Play by Horton. At the moment, England can't get Frank Kirby on the ball. She's playing just off Ellen White. Maybe not deep enough to break between the lines. What do you think, Sue? Well, they struggled in the first half against Brazil to get Frank Kirby on the ball in those little pockets of space, but. As soon as in the second half when the game started to open up, she started to 
get in between those lines and get on the ball and that's when England started to play that's when they started to create things so that's exactly what they'll want to do but America will have watched that game as well and they'll they'll stop her they'll stop that from happening so she's just got to be clever and, and find a way find a way to get on the ball the US fitness levels are supreme they work on it in their training camps always have done and they're in their club close season at the moment uh, although a lot of the US girls won't play um, club football this year, they'll be with their country build next to the World Cup finals. And the, the uh, England women, of course, are uh, coming through to the business end of their season now. Mercy Bronze with Leon likewise in the Champions League. And he's crossing the middle, headed away by O'Hara. Walsh did well, looking for what similar sort of position for where she got the goal against Brazil. Abby McManus on the side because Millie Bright is home recuperating and they so fit for club and country. And made by Karen Bardsley. That was much better though from England, wasn't it? One and two touch passing, found a way through. It's actually good defending from Davidson there on Ellen White. But that's better, they have to move the ball quickly because of the, the speed at which they get closed down, you can't take too many touches. Uh, she was pushed there. Frank Kirby got the wrong side to make the uh, challenge. And she at the moment is physically the strongest midfield player out there. Terry Underwood, the name on the back of her shirt, country and western sing. She finished fourth in American. Idol. It's an icon for me. To watch it. Uh, yes. Glued. Here comes from the Pina. It's a good delivery. Now there's a push in there. Put it to England. A little shove on uh, Danny Stokes, I think it was. Delivery is top class, though, isn't it? Just in the areas exactly where you would want it as a striker. I think it was Lucy Bronze that just got got pushed. Clever from her. Bailey. Jean -Jean Paris went unpunished. It's Lucy Bronze. Just to win that. Strong in the challenge against Rapino. Deflected. 147 times USA International, Rapino now in her 30s. Olympic gold winner back in 2012. Never would have told his players all about Rapino, they'd know all about her anyway. Remarkable character, she's had three cruciate knee ligament injuries. She's an activist on many fronts. Towards her. To Paris, remarkable that she's planted. I thought she was in such yeah. pain when she went over on her ankle. I did as well. I was really surprised that she came back on the field, and and then I thought it'd be one of those that the next day it would swell up and, and be really painful. But she's a tough scouser. I hope at some stage the cameras do pan out because I've actually got your present Sue here at the Nissan Stadium in Nashville. Got your season ticket to see the uh, Tennessee Titans. Say team, I'll show you the tickets. Uh, the seat I've got for you if the cameras do pan out for us. It's a cold old night. People are muffled up. Not as cold as it was the other day in Philadelphia when uh, poor old mascots were freezing before. They, were. they really were. Little fair haired girl was almost crying. I thought it was you. <laughs> and, uh, about three foot tall, the little lad. Little lad. <laughs> Dahl Kemper, they are determined to get the Sauerbrunn and Dahl Kemper partnership going again. Becky Sauerbrunn, the 33 year olds out with his knee, but she's on the bench, she's not fully fit. Alex Morgan. So we'll triangle that to England. Manister Kira Walsh and Danny Stokes, Manchester City trio. 
these days couldn't quite get. They're only played 11 games for the club, but this season had her injury problems. So four years in the USA, actually. She was down in South Florida. Crystal Dunn. They've got a year in England playing with Chelsea. So far, so oh, that was a risky one. Yeah, I'll tell you after this. And a good ball forward by Mallory Pugh. And there's a, a free kick here. It's gone England's way. Just a little bit of a in the game. Yeah, I just think England, they're, they're causing their own problems. They're taking too many touches at times. The, the passing isn't as, as crisp as what they would have liked it to have been, but when they do knock the ball around quickly, they can create opportunities. I think the out ball's got to be out wide. If you look at the United States of America, they, they keep it really tight and compact with the defending, so they have to try and stay wide. So get Tony Duggan one side, get Nikita Paris the other side, or get your full backs overlapping, because that's where the spaces are. I'm surprised. Oh. Well, that's a painful one. Jada, Jada foot. But um, I'm surprised you were saying they've gone so narrow in there at times, because against... Japan in the opening 15 minutes down the right hand side they were blistering Tobin Heath was exceptional yeah I think when they defend they get really tight and compact don't they and then when they attack I think that's when they go that's when they stretch the play as much as they can 19 wins in the last 23 one defeat in 31 only wins at the moment and uh, whatever happens the she believes cup will go to the last batches of games England it's Japan on Tuesday at 10 o'clock on BBC Four. All of the tournament on the BBC, all the England warm-ups on the BBC as well. And uh, you can see the whole of France 2019 right here on the BBC. Can you brush up on your French when we're over there? Oui. Peels, unbelievable. That comes a Brett's a little bit here, do we? But uh, I don't actually said so. we'll get into uh, Parliament and whatever happens, don't let Sue Smith into France. <laughs> and it's cleared away. Come on! And we'll move way through the first half. We've had two efforts on goal from the USA, nothing from England really so far. <laughs> USA are the better team. Top one corner by Morgan. Rapino. Dummy in the middle by Morgan. Uh, a rifle of an effort. Rose Lavelle picking up the ball in a deep position. Do you know, Alex Morgan is such a good player. That's clever, just little dummy. You know, that shot was always rising, but initially her, her build-up play, the way that she comes short to receive the ball, brings in other players. Real intelligent player. Not just a goal scorer, her all-round play, I think, is excellent. Carly Lloyd, years of catching up with her. She has a role from the bench these days. The iconic goalkeeper, Hope Solo, was, to put it mildly, and, and to be as nice as I can, she was a bit of a nutter, really, wasn't she, Hope Solo? <laughs> she was, you know what I mean? But she was an iconic figure. Now, she's no longer. They've, they dropped her after Rio. There was a shenanigan over there after the, after the World Cup. Alex Morgan is very much um, the marketing star yeah. for, for US football. Yes, yeah, she is. You never quite knew what was going to happen with Hope Solo one day to the next, did you, really? Such a good goalkeeper, really? but it's too much off the field stuff. Did you have anyone like that when you were playing for England? No, we were all really good. Morton yeah. from Bardsley. Big USA connection, born in Chino Hills, California. Went to uh, Fullerton. Car State Fullerton University played for the uh, Titans. Hurts. Uh, here's uh, Dal Kemper into Juliet again, swinging pass up to Alex Morgan. I'll tell you what, to England have settled here. Yeah, they had to. Last five minutes. Yeah. Well, until then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was always going to happen, but they have, and, and that's what they have to do build your way into the game. 
They were exhausted when they got to Philadelphia. The, the, the um, journey was delayed because of the storms and also England went there. A lot of the players had just come out of the um, Continental Cup, yes. yeah. which went to penalties. Manchester City players. And that was a real tough game for both sides. And then to then get on a plane and, and fly, travel, does take it out. And you could see in that first half that they did look fatigued. Neve was also involved in that, wasn't she? Some people might be surprised that she's not started after that stunning goal. I think she'll certainly play a part. Lavelle. Too high through the middle for Alex Morgan. I didn't love that. If they've got the USA pumping long, hopeful balls like that, then England's game plan has worked here. They've, they've uh, taken the sting out of the, out of the crowd. healthier crowd here England playing second behind the USA game that was earlier in this stadium in the first game only uh, less than 6,000 watched England against Brazil the crowd had swollen to nearly 15,000 by the time the USA came out to play Japan and the fans that watched the USA here earlier have stayed Davison. Well to be here actually Davison. She broke her ankle in November, I think it was, missed the friendlies at the tail end of the year. And, uh, lost away in France and uh, one in Spain. And a very impressive uh, CONCACAF Championship, the World Cup qualifying. They won that group, beat to Canada in the final game. Crystal done. And Adriana French on her debut hasn't had a lot to do. She had to scurry there. Yeah, well, she had a very bad knee injury. Uh, Adriana French had to have an operation. And a flick on by Mallory Pugh. Uh, drives it up to Heath. She's got great pace to get in behind it. She's chased by Steph Horton. She stumbled. That'd be my first reaction. She stumbled. Punching the ground in dismay, but I have to see it again, so I didn't think that was a penalty. I completely agree with you. Steph Horton showed a real good turn of pace there to keep up with her. Got herself and her body in the way, and yeah, she stumbled before Steph was even around her. I don't think it was a penalty. I think Steph, a really good recovery run. Great year, Tobin Heath. After, after ankle surgery, actually, she couldn't play in the She Believes last year, but in that World Cup qualifying, she got four in four. A couple against uh, uh, Jamaica, I think. And here's Morgan. It's the first test so far for Karen Barsley. Pushing up quite away. Everything behind that, Karen Barsley? Yes, she did. And again, it's an intelligent run from Morgan, just in between the centre half and the full back. Difficult to pick up. This is what England have been hoping for a counter. Brad Kirby. Look at the blue shirts back again. Seven of them very quick, very athletic, the USA. Stokes. Duggan. Well, wide from Kira Walsh the score for her country, won this season for Manchester City. Here's Frank Kirby. Yeah, this is the this is the decision. Oh, that's not, that's the that's the shot, that's a Karen Barsley save. Again, she does so well to just get herself and her body in the right position, but Karen Barsley safely behind it. 26 goals in the last 29 internationals, uh, Alex Morgan. Call a baby horse uh, when she first came into the team. She's a charge around all over the place. It's a 
Liverpool ball. Danny Stokes has done well. The threat down this right hand side. Ethan Pugh and O'Hara. Just to see that on the name of Kelly O'Hara's shirt, so the name on her shirt is Heather O'Reilly. So her icon is a football player. Uh, and, uh, she was latterly with Arsenal, Heather. She was. Met her that once with you, I think. We, did we meet her in a game somewhere when she was over? I didn't do much talking. You, you were there. Half an hour played. By the way, I have to say, um, one of the names on the back of one of these shirts is Mia Hamm. Samantha Mewis is on the bench in there. So Mia Hamm was a US football icon. But I remember back in the day, there used to be these horrible tawdry plastic dolls. Mia Hamm dolls were really shocking sheep. I mean, who would buy? Who would buy a Mia Hamm doll? Who would buy something? It was given to me. Was it? It was given to me. Oh. I still have it. Oh. How old are you? <laughs> She was an absolute legend in the women's game. On the mantelpiece? In the cupboard? In the attic? Way, yeah. <laughs> Good player, wasn't she? Yeah. Goal scorer. Trend set up. Yep. Sporty icon. Just a trip. Yeah, given away there by Mallory Pugh. Burst out by her. And the fourth, she believes, cup for Morgan. Headed back to Rapino. That's a super strike in the USA lead. Megan Rapino, second in this year's competition, and it was a belter. And England are behind. Absolutely fantastic strike from Megan Rapino, but that started from an England press. England were pressing, but didn't quite do it together. Quickly, so quickly, the United States of America broke. Great crossfield ball, which is what they look for all the time. And then as it falls to, to Megan Rapino, at this is a, there's your crossfield ball. Rachel Daly does well to part clear, but who's the first one to react? Megan Rapino, great first touch out of the feet, sets herself really, really well. And what a fantastic strike that is. Parabati didn't even move. Was her vision obscured there? I think it was a great strike. I think it happened so quickly. It's difficult for Rachel Daly. She's trying to get back into position. I just think England have to react better to that second ball. You know, react to where she's going to do that. It's her 43rd international goal. It's her sixth in this year of fixtures. And she's a good player. Uh, one thing I would say... Free kick here for England, is it? It's a free kick for England here. She picked up, is it the back pass she's given it for? Ellen White was pressing. Yeah, I think it was. I think that's what Ellen White is, is appealing for. Well, here's a chance for England. Don't forget, the USA twice let the lead slip against Japan. When they constantly pump diagonal balls, that's what I was going to say moments ago. And it was a diagonal ball that caused England's undoing. Got a free kick here now. Kirby might bend the ball. Duggan could from the other side. Steph Walton will blast it. Sometimes these are just a little bit too close though, aren't they? Low. We've seen a tactic where players standing in front of the wall have rolled on into the wall and opened up a little bit of a gap as players jump. <laughs> Testing for Adriana French on her international debut. It's going to be Steph Hawkins. Yeah. Duggan's going to roll it. Launches away there to the right hand side. Oh, 
Evans. Steph Horton. Oh, yes. what an equaliser! And really well played and well worked that. Ten minutes before the break, 1-1. One, one. That's fantastic from Steph Horton. You could see what she was trying to do, but to get that technique, to be able to get it round the wall and into the far corner, absolutely fantastic. I was saying it's a difficult technique when you're so close. To get it up over the wall, you can't, but what you can do is get it round the wall, and that's exactly what she did. Brilliant from Steph Horton. That's what you want from your captain, your leader. You can see it here. Tony Duggan, the waiting, the waiting. Lucy Bronze is just standing there just to create a little bit of an issue in there. She just drew Rapino out from the end of the wall she there. She did. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant strike. It was the only place you can see it better from this angle. This is the only place that it could have gone. No stopping that one. Well, Bronze rattled Megan Rapino, and she came off the end of the wall, charged towards the free kick. But by that stage, it was already beyond her. 1 1. Splendid equaliser. Steph Horton's 12th goal for her country. Can't hold a lead, it would seem, in this competition in the USA. One in the world. England, two. Uh, England, uh, four, I beg your pardon. Japan, eight, and Brazil, ten. Competition normally would bring Germany and France here, but they're staying back in Europe to concentrate on their preparations for World Cup 2019. That's why Brazil are here, that's why Japan are here. Just a bit of an experience there from France. be playing football at all actually when she was a youngster she was a very good basketball player but she picked up a very nasty injury there that nearly ruled her out of football Julia it's back then to the goalkeeper football so strong in the universities and colleges uh, in the USA for women but club football isn't as strong there now as it is in, in England would you say as it is in Germany and, and France I think the England league at the moment is, is fantastic and you can see the likes of Crystal Dunn wanted to come over wanted to play in in our league and because it is fully professional it's really competitive now and it's great to see players like that wanting to come over so yeah I think our league is right up there with the, the very best at the moment Building up, of course, to a terrific climax. You can watch it all on the Women's Football Show, on the BBC. And see a couple of weeks out of Arsenal at the moment. Chelsea still got to play in the Champions League. Done. Let's take a little steps across. And buoyed by the goal, because up until that point they were second place. They were, they were starting to get their way back into the game though, they, you could see that they have a game plan and you can see that it, it's, it's start, it was starting to work, but that, you've got to praise Ellen White I think for actually making that happen, you know, making the goalkeeper have to pick the ball up, even if she's not had the ball for a few minutes in the game, she's constantly worked off the ball, that's what you need from your striker. Well done. With the Serena Williams name on her back. If you've know, just come in and you are wondering, it's because it's, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, it's International Women's Day next Thursday, I think it is. It's certainly part of Women's History Month. And yeah. She believes couple, so they've had these iconic uh, historic names, or current female icons, the names on the back of their shirts. Tobin Heath. Doris Burke is the name of her back. She's a TV analyst on NBA, it says here. Then by Dark Cape. And resilience and coming back from a deficit. And it grows the bell. Turn. It's a good ball out to her as well by Dunn. And she's cut it back here neatly and she was looking for Heath coming in. And it's cleared away on the edge of the England box but not too far. 
And play that wide to O'Hara. Donald Kemper looking for Rapino back into the middle. But we got it away. A bit of a clash of heads in there. Ertz, switch feet to left and push it out of play. See a replay of that. I think there was a little bit of a naughty challenge on Steph Horton in the penalty area there. Looks a bit, little bit late, didn't it? Yeah. Steph Horton won the initial header. It's quality, wasn't it? Absolute quality from Steph. We know she's capable of that. We've seen it time and time again. Score one in uh, Canada in the World Cup finals against Norway. Quickly swung away by Walsh, it's a good early ball. Duggan, Stokes in support, Manchester City teammates. Duggan trying to make Dahl Kemper and get away. That's a tidy ball by Morgan. Just too far ahead of Tobin Heath. She's looking to play in her third World Cup finals in the summer, Tobin Heath. Good player. She was at uh, got three college titles at the um, Carolina Tar Heels College Club. That's where Lucy Bronze played for a little while. Okay. Moment, England heading. If they can hold on to this to four points, Japan have four points. It'll be decided on Tuesday. One way to go. Mary Pugh. I've just been impressed with England's character to come back now twice against Brazil when they were poor in the first half, second half, completely different performance, and now going a goal down to number one in the world. They've really fought their way back into the game. They've lost their way here at the moment. The world champions, the top ranked side in the world. Destination for Jill Ellis. Heath, Rapino. A good World Cup four years ago. It's Crystal Dunn. Whips it, that's a brilliant ball. O'Hara back in the middle, just too far. Ahead of Alex Morgan as she hones in on 100 goals for her country. What a ball that was again. And that's ex again, they're looking for that crossfield pass straight away. And it was just a poor delivery from O'Hara. She's better than that. She'll be really disappointed. Just needed to just slide it across the floor. Morgan would have been in. You know, with the corner been bothered by these so far and they were again and it's a header goalwards and it's cleared away by Lucy Bronze the Bell's header it was and he's done Rapino don't think she'll keep it in play and England have found set pieces difficult they have and that is something that I know they've been working on defending set pieces because they at times they do look like they struggle from those and, and that's you know, where you need your big leaders like Steph Horton in there demanding where people go, and she does do that, but it's difficult on her own sometimes. That's what I think England can work on, getting the ball in behind Crystal Dunn down that side. Much in the same way Brazil did it, behind, get the ball in behind Lucy Bronze yeah. in the first half. Because Crystal Dunn is a, is a wide left winger, really, yes, she yes. started as a forward, she was top scorer in the uh, Women's National League back in 2015 when she was a Washington Spirit player. And she once scored five in a game uh, for the US in an Olympic qualifier against Puerto Rico, I think it was. So she loves to bomb forward, the 19. One of the North Carolina title winners this year. Problem here, Rapino, lovely. Saying she doesn't want any more of that. Peter Paris. Time. 
promising break here then, O'Hara. It's come out wide to Tobin Heath. And easy for the goalkeeper. Good decision there, Abby McManus coming out. What are your overall thoughts of the half, sir? I think England have played their way back into the game. I think they started off slowly. I've just gradually got better and better. I think when they, they move the ball quickly, they look good. I think Phil Neville will be happier with that first half performance. I think they got a telling off after the Brazil first half, didn't they? Yeah. Yes, he said that afterwards, didn't he? That's not a good ball out for England. She just played it, Pepino. Part of most of the good things about the US. She time added on to time added on, and here's O'Hara. Back to her. And she's again Tobin Heath. She gets across left footed, and weeks it into the air. It should be an England goal kick. That should see the half out, I would think. And indeed, it does. Well, a good first 45 minutes in the end for England. They trail to a lovely goal by Rapino. USA taking the lead, and then Steph Horton's free kick bent beyond the deficient goalkeeper. Adriana French leveling it up. And I think in the end, in the half, end of the half, England were good value for that. And they look a happier team going in at the break, which at the moment, as they go in on a cold Nashville evening, sees the score on US 1, England 1. Yeah, all square at the break, Alex Scott, Rachel Brown Finnis alongside me. Um, Rachel, it was a very fast start by the USA, though it looked a little bit ominous for those first few minutes. It was, I don't think I breathed for the first two <laughs> minutes. Uh, looking at all the action, it was predominantly the US. I think England did really, really well to, to sort of to weather the storm. I mean, the first, probably the real um, sort of so close, fine margins, brilliant ball in from Rapino from, from the corner. And I think it's uh, warded off the line from Abby McManus. But, you know, England looked shell-shocked a little bit in that first few minutes and did really, really well. I mean, Alex mentioned it when we were in set. That's why you have someone on the back post. And it is exactly that. She did the job perfectly. As the ball comes into play, you turn in off your, off your back post. And, uh, and that's, uh, you know, the merits of doing so. Yeah, but they did galvanise after that, didn't they, England? And they've, they've really given the USA a good game out there. They have. You see, England have built themselves into the game. After that fast start from USA, it was about being confident, getting on the ball, trying to break USA's momentum that they had. And I've been really pleased with England's performance. And I can feel like, well, feel going into the second half, it'd be like believing yourself a bit more. Show your composure on the ball. I've been really impressed with Kira Walsh taking time on the ball, not rushing her passes, looking out, just building up from the back line and actually England being brave. Yeah, let's have a look at the first goal because um, it's worth looking at again. <laughs> it was quite a finish from Megan Rapino. Unbelievable. I mean, England conceded a little bit of possession. I think at times our bodies around the ball, this is the case, didn't quite pressure enough, but look at the strike. I mean, Karen Bardsley, England's best goalkeeper, arguably one of the best in the world, doesn't even move from that. It's, uh, it's hit with such precision and such force that it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing and you can't take too much about the lack of defending from England. Yeah, there were bodies in there, Alex. Will, will they be disappointed with that one? Or do you just kind of have to say, fair play, that's a strike? It's hard. I suppose when you look at USA play, that's what they look for, the diagonal ball. And you can see Mego, Megan Rapinoe's experience in there. It's like, OK, where do I need to be to pick up that second ball? So she knows straight away it comes to her first touch and it's a great finish. Yeah, but England got themselves right back in it not long after that. A, a lovely strike from Steph Horton as well. <laughs> and it, it looked a little bit like nobody quite knew what was going on here. Yeah, sort of odd circumstances, really. A bit of uh, indecision from the goalkeeper, who then eventually comes through in that indirect free <laughs> kick for Steph. Beautiful. I mean, it's hard to practice because you don't often practice indirect free kicks, but, you know, with an onrushing player, Megan Rapino bombing at her, to be able to pinpoint it in that corner, to put it past, you know, a substantial-sized goalkeeper, it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, we've seen her doing it from 
sort of outside the box, yeah. but like Rachel says, to do that. I'm sitting from here, that my close. hands up, I'm going, it's too close to Steph. <laughs> She's not going to get that in the goal from there. And I'm she must have heard you. But look, Steph practices her free kicks time and time again. She stays behind after training and practices. It's a different technique for Steph. She's going for more for that side foot, but what a quality finish. Yeah, brilliant stuff. And it has been impressive. Like you've been saying, Alex, impressive the way that, that England have, have kept the ball and, you know, they're playing with, a right back essentially in the centre of midfield. Yeah. Kira Walsh alongside her, a young player, but, yeah. but they're retaining the ball well. You can see the balance between them. You've got Kira Walsh, who's technically the player in there, and you've got Lucy Bronze alongside her, who's bringing that energy, her work rate. And I think the balance between them has been really good in there, and that's what you need. And it's being confident on the ball here, not rushing your play. Yes, nothing's on, but having that patience, that build-up. Sometimes, yes, for England, it hasn't amounted to much in the final third yet, but that's where I'm hoping in the second half we can build on from that. But this is encouraging signs. Now I want to see England keep building the play and actually use our wide areas more, because I feel that's where, in the second half, we can exploit the USA. There's at times like this where we did it further up the pitch, where it did become effective and did cause the US problems. But I think Kira brought a real air of composure about the game, um, which, which I was really impressed with. I think she hid a little bit in, Braz in the Brazil game, but she's stood up to be counted tonight. Is that the challenge in the second half, um, to try and perhaps create a little bit more in that final third? Uh, I think so. I think play the football further up the pitch. Um, it was great seeing us play out of uh, danger in our own defensive third with composure and with precision, but we need to do that further up the pitch to actually cause the US problems. Yeah, in the second half against Brazil, Nikita Paris caused Brazil all sorts of problems. I'd like, to, I'd like England to use their wide players more. Tony Duggan, I want to see her more in this, but it's about being brave in the second half. OK, let's go further up the uh, field, like Rachel was just saying, and use our key players. Yeah, really interesting second 45 to come. Well, there's still one more She Believes game to come on the BBC as well. Japan against England. That's on Tuesday night at 10 o'clock on BBC Four. The Merseyside Derby is one of three matches on Match of the Day 2 tomorrow night. The third and final day of athletics from Glasgow gets underway tomorrow morning. And the Premier League show is back on Thursday at the new time of 7 o'clock. Trent Alexander-Arnold, Virgil van Dijk and Dele Alli are on the cast list. Well, it's one each in Nashville. The second half commentary shortly, but this isn't the only tournament taking place in women's football. The Algarve Cup is underway. Scotland, who are in the same World Cup group as England, took on Canada yesterday afternoon. So the pick up on a long range shot, and that's a poignant bit of work there from Cuthbert. Balls in, the cannons there, and oh, swiped a leg at it, and another great save from Alexander. Lawrence for Canada, and it's a penalty to Canada. Slow to the right side, and it's a goal for Canada. You know, put this B kick into the box. Stick in there. Oh, it's touched there by Corsi in the six yard box but she just can't get enough contact on that to divert it into the net. It's been a brilliant test for the Scottish side. It's finished here at the Stadio Municipal de Lagos. Scotland nil, Canada won. This is a long-standing prestigious tournament. We've got 12 quality teams here, so um, it's going to help no end to our preparation for the World Cup. Scotland. D2 against England. You couldn't write that if you tried. We face initially England, Japan and Argentina, so they're taking part in their own respective competitions just now, but you know, it'll be a real test and a measure for us in terms of playing tough opposition. We've now qualified for back-to-back -back tournaments, which we've never done before, and also our first World Cup. So it's just exciting and we just want to take the opportunity, enjoy the journey and hopefully progress the game even more. We don't have many international windows, so it's important that you can maximise the time spent with all the players. With the team we have, I think we're very capable of getting it out of the group. You want to go to the World Cup, you want to perform, you want to get points on the board, and I think we can definitely do that. We need to try and prepare for tournament football. The rest and recovery is important and also tactically playing against strong teams. How can we get a good performance and then subsequently hopefully good results? The aim is to play for your team, play at major tournaments, play in you know, the most important games and I just hope to stay fit and be there to represent my country in the summer. Yeah, Scotland heading to their first World Cup. Alex, it was a big test against Canada yesterday, a top five nation, but do you think 
Scotland will be quite pleased with that result. They restricted Canada to very few opportunities, really, in, in that game. Yeah, when you look at Scotland in the Euros a couple of years ago, you could see it was their first tournament. The pressure got to them playing in crowds, the pressure. And from then, I've seen Scotland grow. So when I listen to Kim right there saying that she believes they can get out of the group, because this Scotland team are growing. They're used to now playing against the bigger nations, the Canadas, they've played against USA and actually done really well. So they've got this belief about them now. Yeah, and it will be a big test playing in an Argyle Cup, getting that sort of sense. They've only had that kind of big tournament experience once before. Will this be a different mentality for Scotland, do you think, going into this World Cup, having these experiences now behind them? It should be. I mean, they should certainly come in with a whole lot of belief. Uh, and, you know, I think that's probably a purpose of the Algarve Cup with Shelley Kerr and, and uh, girls, is to, to build on their experiences of the European Championships to prepare them for the World Cup. They have to at least have that belief that they're good enough to be there, and they are. You look at you know, that team collectively, as well as some of the star individuals that they've got, you know, they're a really tough outfit. And certainly when England face them in the group, it'll be a completely different test <laughs> to what it was in the Euros. Well, I hope so, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway no comments. Scotland, <laughs> Scotland will play Iceland on Monday in their next uh, Algarve Cup game. You can see that on the BBC Sport website. We'll also see England take on Japan on Tuesday, two of Scotland's other opponents in that group stage. I mean, are we going to see a little bit more how this group might play out at the World Cup? Uh, I, I mean, nobody's going to be giving away their, all their secrets in this, but we've seen some frailties from Japan already in the, in the game against the USA uh, and against Brazil. You know, the, the conceding goals, which is quite pleasing. Um, but I think teams are trying things out still, so you can't say that this is how exactly they're going to play and, and what they're going to do. You know, I think there's still a lot of secrets that people are going to keep in their locker. Well, we shall see. We shall find out. Let's head back into the stadium now where Joe Curry has been speaking to the head of women's football at the Football Association. Yes, I'm joined by Baroness Sue Campbell, who I'm assuming is reasonably satisfied after that first 45 minutes. Yeah, I think after a fairly uh, nervy few minutes we settled down I think we've played some very good football and uh, it's very evenly matched it's a great game to watch look you're back out here in the States you're playing the top teams in the world three months out from the World Cup how much importance is the FA putting on this tournament well it's the whole thing it's a journey really through to the World Cup and, and these opportunities are really great learning experiences for our players um, you know it's fulfilled to both build the team but also build the squad so that he's got confidence he can bring people off the bench in, at important times to win games, as, as we saw Beth do in that first game against Brazil. So these are really important learning opportunities. You mentioned Phil there. A year ago, you and I stood here in the States and talked about his, his appointment and what you were hoping he could achieve with the team. If you had to give a school report one year on, how would you grade him? Well, as I, I think he's done a fantastic job. I mean, I'm not going to score him on a scoreboard, but uh, he's done a tremendous job. He's built a great culture in the squad. Um, the players really respect and admire him. Um, and he's got a great team, a support team around him. He's just, he's just a very exceptional person. Uh, and as you see, he's beginning to demonstrate he's an exceptional coach. early on here. Back to Rapino. Oh, it's a super strike in the USA League. And it was a belter. That is going to roll it. Steph Horton. Oh, yes. what an equaliser. 1-1. One, one. Well, two cracking goals so far in that first half. Alex, it's a big second half mm -hmm. to come for both England and the USA. Possibly more so for, for England because they know yeah. if they can get a result from this game, that, you know, with having beaten Brazil already, they'll yeah. be in a very good position in that group. The confidence it will give the, the girls beating the world champions. And actually, a couple of days ago, Phil was talking about how he admires this US, USA team and how they play with this swagger and this confidence. Well, actually, how, come, how about England in the second half? They bring their swagger into the game because they've actually nullified their big players like Alex Morgan. I think she only had one opportunity. You don't want to get her in behind, but I think Steph and Abby McManus have done really well. So now for England, just grow into the game. And technically, you've got Kira Walsh in there. Continue what you're doing and build on that first half performance because I think it's been great. How important is that to come up against teams like the USA out of World Cup competition? Because 
they have been the best in the world for so long. They have an aura about them. But if you can go and play them and get a result against them on their own patch, that must give great confidence for when you, if you do have to meet them in major competition. Absolutely. I mean, there's two things, I think, when you come up against teams like the US. You've got the opportunity to learn so much about the swagger, about how they carry themselves, about how they approach any game, that their mentality is, we are going to win this game. Yeah. Absolutely no doubts. And secondly, you know, the opportunity now, with the ranking that we are, that England are in, in this... Uh, currently, is the opportunity to go out there and beat them and to prove to themselves if they need any confidence lift, England, that they can do it, that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best teams in the world. This England team have been talking a lot about how they believe they can go and win the World Cup. And sometimes talk is cheap. You start to say it, but do you actually believe it? These are the games where you show people that you actually can go and win a World Cup. And belief means it makes a big difference, doesn't it? Because we know that that's exactly what the USA, the likes of the USA and Germany have. They have ultimate belief in themselves. They do. It's, it's no their chance. mentality. Yeah. I tell you, when I went over and played in America, that's what I was shocked. They believe everything they say. It's infectious. It rubs off around you. And you be begin to believe as she well. Believes. She believes. <laughs> <laughs> Such yeah. an art name for a turn <laughs> That's why I think that seriously. Yeah. I mean, when I was out in, in, in America, similarly, you couldn't believe the air of confidence across, you know, these athletes. But you think about it, how important that is to, to performing. You know, why have any sort of negative sort of thoughts about a match when flip it, go positive, say how amazing you all are, and it can affect your performance in a positive way. They push each other to be the best. They're competitive with themselves. They keep pushing it. They don't let their standards drop. And that's what we want to see in this England team. Yeah, well, let's get out there for that second half and join Sue Smith and Jonathan Pierce. Yes, thanks very much. Uh, welcome back. Phil Neville having a word with the hat-trick hero of World Cup uh, 15, Carly Lloyd there. Of course, she had the spell with Manchester City. Took part in the draw as well in Paris uh, at Christmas, and there was a lot of press interest in her. Interesting to hear the talk in the studio, so about the competitiveness and the confidence the USA players have. It's drilled into them at college level, the competitiveness of women's football from an early age through high school yeah. and through college level, all the way up into, into the, you know, then they, they push them into the under-17s, under-20s at national level and up through to the, the women's national team. No, you're right, and the winners, and they expect to win everything that they take part in, and, and I think the girls mentioned that they're competitive with each other in training, they always want to be the best, and, and that's what, it, it's a cool and that's what England are doing now, and that's why they're starting to get the rewards from, from doing that. Let's make no mistake about this. The USA here will have trepidation about this second half because they've seen England weather the storm, they've seen England come back really well. Definitely, and, and that's something that, again, Phil Neville, the players, they, they have that in them, that they can come back, they have that, that belief that even if they go a goal down, they've got the capabilities to score, they've got players that can score, that can create things. And I'd just like to see them a little bit more do that in the second half. Off we go then in the second half, the USA all in blue and kicking from right to left. And the ball headed away by Abby McManus, just missed in there. Bottom midfield by Manchester City's Kira Walsh. And here's uh, Bronze, once of Manchester City, of course. Lucy Bronze picks up again, the BBC uh, World Women's Footballer of the Year in towards Ellen White. This is a good start. She nearly put Kirby away. Now, after the half-time interval against Brazil, um, England started so strongly, in the words of Phil Neville, certainly had an impact, and they came out and scored virtually straight away as a problem for Nikita Paris. If she's OK. Just wondered, I think. Yeah, he's a good man, Phil, and... Uh, Talks very honestly about the game, very straightforward, forthright fellow, winner. Ran into him in the Manchester United dressing room. And she got a bump there, she was winded. Bump from Rose Lavelle. She's in the USA, although her family originate from uh, Ireland, Rose Lavelle. Kelly O'Hara as well. And that's one of the reasons why her, the name on the back of her shirt is Heather O'Reilly. What she's saying, you know, reason she's my Irish soulmate. Yeah. Isn't it? Irish sister. sister. And uh, here's Lucy Bronze. Each of the USA players has uh, written a little bit on their website about uh, why they've chosen these iconic names to be on the back of their shirt. And I won't mention the player. You'll have to look it up yourselves and read it. But um, she said, uh, I can't really think of any female iconic characters. The 
major icons in my life are male footballers or, in fact, just men. <laughs> so I don't think she really got the point. <laughs> but uh, you'll have to look it up yourselves. I don't want to name and shame. But uh, it's, a, good, it's a, a noble idea, I think. Some of you will have your own thoughts about it. Here's um, Lavelle. And the hugely dangerous Alex Morgan. Trying to become, I think it's the seventh US player to 100 goals. Start here by the world champions. The second half, a good ball forward by Rapino. England okay, still in their shape. We've beaten the USA four times. Most recent meetings have been one nil to either team. Ben White's goal won it for England a couple of years back. Well by Ertz. Abby McManus. Yeah, she's let Heath uh, get in behind her and she's pulled it back there. And Alex Morgan, who would have normally banked on her scoring there, did pop up quite high for her in the end, but sloppy play by England's Demi Stokes. It was sloppy play and, and it was a let off for England, but Manis is just trying to show the ball out, but the ball stayed in play. Great play there to, for it by Tobin Heath, and like you say, you expect Alex Morgan to do much better in front of goal, thankfully for England. She didn't shot completely underneath it. I apologise to Demi Stokes, it was on Manus, of course. And better get to the dead ball line and pull the cross in. And she'd normally bury those, wouldn't she, Alex Morgan? Yeah, it's very unlike her. With the 99 goal tank you wearing on her shoulders, does that happen in, in football? I know cricketers, when they get to 99, sometimes stutter a little bit. I don't think so. Off. You know what you're going to get with Ellen White, you're going to get work, work, work for 90 minutes of every game. This is a horror bringing out of defence, goes down, we played Demi Stokes. And here's Lucy Bronze. Discipline in there at the heart of midfield. Players all around you. Yeah, do you know, I, I was going to praise Lucy Bronze because that's difficult. You're used to playing in that full-back role. You're facing forward the majority of the time when you've got to receive the ball with your back to goal. It's difficult, it's a different technique, and I think she's done it well. Daly looking for Nikita Paris, just bounced away from her. Just brings that energy, doesn't she? Lucy Bronze, that power that obviously they're missing because of Jordan Nobbs and, and Jill Scott not being there. Well, they're missing three of their major players because I'd add Millie Bright to that, the way she's come yes. on in the last 12, 18 months for England. Definitely. I know Abby McManus has had a very good game today in a decent tournament. But uh, I think Millie Bright will start alongside Steph Horton in the summer. This hurts. Rapino. Hurts have started the second half in a much deeper role as if they've gone to a back three. Let's see about there now. Between Dal Kemper and uh, Davidson. So they push the fullbacks on. Yeah. They did that, didn't they, for a spell against Japan? He's bronze and it's offside. Wouldn't count it anyway. Flag went up against Ellen White. They, they did use that against Japan, yeah. but it didn't stop the Japanese creating chances against them. I thought, all right, I think they're the best team here in the, in the competition. On what we've seen from the two games so far, Japan, I think, technically very gifted. I think that's what's so good about this tournament, that the different tests, aren't they? You're playing against the, some of the best teams in the world. You have to try and figure out a way of beating them. It's a poor ball. And give it away there. Mallory Pugh, Beyonce's name on a, her shirt. Only played a couple of games in uh, World Cup qualifying. Place too many passes in the first half. Just to hear uh, Alex saying in the studio that uh, he thought Kira was very patient with her passing, wasn't hurried. Let's place that one. Here's Lucy Bronze. 
Oh, that's a lovely ball. And here's Nikita Paris. And what a very good goal. And England lead against the world champions by two goals to one with 51 minutes gone. Great play from England and Nikita Paris. So clinical there in front of goal. But it has to, you've got to mention that ball around the corner. Absolute quality. And that's where England are good. When they're moving it so quickly like, like that, you can see Lucy Bronze, great ball into Frank Kirby. What awareness from her. She drops into that little pocket of space straight away. She knows where Nikita Paris is. She knows she's got the pace to get in beyond. But this is a very good first touch. Sets her up just sets herself doesn't she just before she's about to strike right into the bottom corner brilliant from england really well taken lovely ball by frank kirby pass of the game yeah. and nikita paris 11 goals now for england her first in her two she believes cup tournaments got six in england's world cup qualifying campaign Under her head. Hurts. Here's for Pino. Dangerous ball. Partly got something on it, and it's high and well wide by Rose Lavelle. And you just have to be careful with those second balls. Just deliver into the box. Karen Bardsley does what she can to, to try and get the ball out of the area, but they just have to try and re respond quicker close the ball down you know that America are going to shoot whenever they get that opportunity whenever they see the sight of goal thankfully for England it's been poor quality well, they've only lost once in 31 games and they are the top ranked team in the world but I'm not too sure whether this US team is as strong as it was four years ago Lloyd's no longer a starter Brian's not in midfield holiday at Klingenberg the left backs retired they've got problems on the right side of O'Hara coming forward today but she hasn't been um, a regular starter, played one of the last five. He's been in and out of the team. They've swapped that position. I think they are as strong. It should be a huge, huge victory for England if they can hold on to that. Here comes Kristen Press. And in the name of Sojourner Truth on her back, she replaces Mallory Pugh, who's been quiet. Uh, Sojourner Truth, if you don't know uh, why Kristen Press has chosen her as her icon, she was a a US abolitionist, she was born into slavery. Um, she escaped from slavery in 1826, and I think is a, is a really worthy name to carry into this tournament, the way the US players have done this tonight. And it, a lot of you will think they shouldn't have done it, or they should have done it, it's worthy, it's not. It's uh, attention-seeking, I don't know, you all have your own ideas, but I think the name is Sojourney Truth. Uh, it should be lauded anyway. Make of this shirt business. You can see the players want to honor powerful, influential, I suppose inspirational women, don't they, by putting their, their names on the backs. I just wonder that the issue for me is that people tuning in for the first time, they're not going to know the players when they've got different names on the back, and obviously it makes life a little bit more difficult for us as well, doesn't it? And there's the name that matters Paris, Nikita. England's goal score 55 minutes and 2 1 up against the USA. Wonderful attitude to the game of football is Nikita Paris. She realises what it's brought to her in life. She comes from uh, Toxic for her. She does, yeah. Sister's Natasha Jonas, the boxer. They come from a sporting family, but she gives absolutely everything when she's on the football pitch. So going forward, you see that quality with the goal, but she'll also get back and, and help out. It's a, it's a player that you, you want in your team. A wonderful smile. And she... Uh, she scores a goal, lights up any stadium. She... She's not smiling. Too sure I want to cross you, Ellis. You got a dad who was an ex Marines commando. She played herself, uh, Jill. She was at College of America as a player. Jill played at. Uh, Glimmer Mary College. Stepped away by Steph Horton. Can I look over there for 10 minutes? I'd be looking for them to hold on in this period. Done. Seen a lot of the ball. 
Lavelle, likewise. It's okay. Steph Gordon just calming things down as it went through to Karen Bardsley. USA have lacked that final ball, the quality on the final ball, like they're just over hit the pass. Very unlike them. Like you said, I wonder if they are as good as, as maybe four years ago. You say this, but in big tournaments, they always seem to turn off. But we thought that of Germany, didn't we, until yeah. the Netherlands and the European Championship. Stokes. If England can hold on to this, if they can go on and win this tournament, major feather in the cap of Phil Neville and the team. We have a long way to go in the game now. That'd be a huge statement. Need a second goal, need a third goal. There's a foul, and she's really played for that well, Nikita Paris. Nipped in between the two, she knew she was going to get a clump. I thought she was excellent against Brazil. I think when you isolate her 1v1 with a defender, she's got the beating of him. She's got that pace, but she's also got that quality to go inside, to go outside. There's Dave. Kirby, boom. Just popped up off that light rectangle. It's a newly installed turf. Sort of a rye grass, it is, I'm told here. Lots of the stadium use that sort of mix these days. And it does scuff up in the uh, American football season. Steph Walton has been excellent for England. This yes. has Walsh and White and Kirby and Duggan awaits on the left hand side. Sweeping England move, poor touch by Tony Duggan. Look at this work by England pushing the USA back. And the champs have got a neat way of coming out of that pressure. Ertz. This bounces up too high for Lavelle. Heath has had as strong a game again. Gordon headed it away. Now Rapina rolls it off that left hand side. Deflected away by Lucy Bronze. And Lavelle sometimes has been careless in possession. Yeah, she's got lots of energy, but technically sometimes loses the ball very easily, which she has done in this game. 23 from Cincinnati, but for example, I don't think she'd have got in that team four years ago. No. You know, they did have exceptional players. She'd get into any team, this one. She, she was named in the USA all-time team. Holly Lloyd wasn't on that side, I saw. We're going to make another substitution here. And it's going to be... Uh, O'Hara who goes off and Becky Sabran who comes on she's the regular uh, international centre-back partner to Dal Kemper and for the World Cup qualifiers started seven of the last eight games but she's had a recurring knee problem she's come on trying to look after her, aren't they? Making sure that she's going to be okay for the World Cup because she's she's a vital part to their side. Well, she played every minute of the World Cup in Canada and until the She Believes last year, when she was out with a foot injury, she'd played 64 internationals on the spin. This doesn't happen to, to Jill Ellis, losing internationals, especially at home. France since the turn of the year they were beaten by Australia uh, last year their only defeat that was in 2018 yeah England could win and Adam White has forced the error oh, she very nearly scored again in the She Believes Cup she loves this tournament great pressure from Ellen White she sees a bit of a bad touch there by Dal Camper and straight away she's onto it you can see what she's trying to do. She's running one way, trying to hit it back across goal. Just can't get her angles right, but initially quality play to actually create that for herself. She's keeping the 
European Championship Golden Boot winner Jody Taylor, US based of course, out of the side at the moment. And on merit, we come back from injury and she looks fresh and here she is again, she's foul. Has to be a foul. Juliet's pulled her back. And on any other day in any other stadium, that would have been a yellow card. Arm on the shoulder, there you go. Pulled her back. It's a bookable offence. Yeah. No, you're right. Well, the US referee, Karen Apt, is being boo booed. in the game, Steph Horton. Going for another one, off the wall. Just ballooned away. Yeah, dark Kemper. USA are rattled, aren't they? No, the like it, do they? no they don't at all. Mistakes creeping in. Don't look comfortable at the back. Rose Lavelle has come off and Sam Mewis is coming on, another one of the North Carolina Courage title winners uh, in the uh, last season, 2018 season. She missed this competition last season with an injury, she had a, a, a knee problem. They ruled her out of the first week to the calendar year. And she's replaced J.K. Rowling. Rose Lavelle goes off. Sam Lewis, my type of footballer actually, Sue, to pair way through college, he worked uh, at Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> and we like that sort of approach. Other donut manufacturers are available. Touch by the peanut. Oh, that's lovely football. We'll come back to Rapino England is stretched here. And Walter's hanging on to it. And Rapino goes on and cuts it back into the middle. It's a fine header away in there by McManus. And Morgan maintains the pressure. And a little touch around the corner by Mewis, just too far for Rapino. Great play there, though, wasn't it? From the link up between Rapino and Alex Morgan. She's got such quality. And that is a vital header by McManus. I think she's played well. I think Steph Horton's played well. I think Abby McManus has played well. Sometimes it's just about being in the right position, getting yourself, knowing where to be as a centre-half. And I think both of those two have, have done it well tonight. Lewis, Nikita Paris, whose goal separates the sides at the moment, is back there and here she is again. Tiredness perhaps with Kira Walsh there. Ben has gone to the right hand side now and comes across away by Horton. Since they've all on uh, Sarah and Dunn has gone to right back. Walsh under pressure. And here's Morgan. And it's a corner kick to the USA. And the pressure's on now. Too many touches in that area. They will nick the ball off you, and straight away they're on the attack. Lucy Bronze did well to get back and stop that shot. Kevin Barsley organising things in there. And it come out to Sarban on the edge of the penalty. A little poke shot. The second one, it's in the equaliser now. It's forced home eventually. Their level, Tobin Heath, it was. The first one was blocked, the second one was blocked, she squeezed it in. A hand on the line, trying to keep it out for England, but the US air level, and it's a set piece again that has troubled England. That was a real scrappy goal from USA, but they won't care. As the delivery comes in, England, they part, clear it, but they just can't, just can't get rid. You know, Steph Horton, Karen Barsley, both in for the same the same ball, I think it's Abby McManus on the line who's trying to keep it out with her hands, but just can't. 
if there's a fox who is it here uh, Steph Wharton on top of Karen Bardsley could, could they have done better there I think they could I think there's a few errors when you look at the as the delivery comes in are you picking your player up are you looking for that second ball yes Steph Wharton and Karen Bardsley both go for the same ball are they communicating so there's a few errors I'm sure Phil Neville will pick up when he analyses that because that is something that England have struggled with set pieces they have to be better defending when you're playing against the best in the world they punish you 26 international goals now Tobin Heath seven of them in the last 12 months in 12 games Harris attacks and it's uh, cleared away by Ertz the deflection off the England player goal kick she said she died it should be a card I don't think that was the case unnecessary as well It has been more of a niggle in this game than I've seen in many uh, women's international since uh, I've been doing these with you for the last four or five years. So, and do you think it's because now these countries are meeting on a more regular basis? Do you think it's because the countries are now getting uh, the, the standard, let's say, of England has improved so much that the USA are rattled? Oh, definitely. Hugely competitive. Both teams desperately want to win. It's that statement, isn't it, for England? to say, look, we've gone and beat the world champions for America. They don't want to lose on home soil. I'm going to make a change. We're going to have six substitutes in these games. Beth Mead of Arsenal is going to come on. Scored that wonderful goal in the opening game. Was it a shot? Was it a cross? Nice player should only give you one answer. <laughs> Sabra. And here's Dahl Kemper. I think that this will be their centre-back partnership in, yeah. the, in the World Cup. And Davison, I don't think she'll start at left-back. Dunn will be, who's on the ball there, will be their left-back. Or Sonnet at right-back. Apart from that, the front six will be, as they started tonight, with Lindsay Hall, and the one exception, she'll come back into the side. Yeah. Uh, so England are here, England have got three major players out we know Jordan Nobbs won't be there at the World Cup his hurts meanwhile he's got a real chance oh and they chose the wrong option and the Ertz was waiting on the left hand side it was Mewis who went through the middle there's two options either side he just tried to force the ball through the middle Two games. Signs of tiring. Sarabran. Winner in uh, Canada. And there's a spring in the step now, the USA. And wobbling badly at 1 2 down, but with 20 minutes to go, is that the better team again? Why Phil Neville's looking to make a change, isn't it? Bring Beth Mead on. That impact. She was excellent when she came on against Brazil. Just gives England then another lift. Because the momentum just keeps shifting. Goes from one side to the other. Great game to watch. Bino closing there. And it's flinging herself forward. Put pressure on Bronze in the midfield. Daly breezing there forward. She's gone beyond Davidson. And now Paris. Punched into Heath. Oh, back pass was a little bit showboaty from Heath. Daly's cross into the middle. Launched away by Rebecca Sabra. And uh, that's that's interesting. Megan Rapino was the first to call the attention of the referee to Steph Horton. Steph Horton went down, and it was Rapino who stopped it. I know they're not very happy. They, uh, her, her teammate there is particularly happy that the, the game was stopped, but it was uh, Rapino who called the attention of it. I think you could see straight away it was a head injury. Yeah, you can see as the, as the ball comes in, it's just a ball that hit her in the face, wasn't it? Very sporting with Megan Rapino there. 
don't know Megan Rapino, but I know her by reputation. She seems a a really good woman. She's an advocate for equality in the USA. And uh, mind you, we said that. I'm not going to mention names, tell people who it was. But when we came up in 2015, you and I said, oh, there's so and so. It's not just a wonderful footballer, she's a wonderful person, a lovely, lovely, lovely person, and a really good, really good woman. And then someone afterwards saw this, well, you're all saying that she's terrible. <laughs> she's a horrible woman. We could take it back then. No, you really said. You know, speak as you find, so. Definitely. Okay, stay forward. Need to come on for England as you just saw where in 22 from Kirby's departed. Real knock in the face. Did she got caught up and stuff. I don't think she did. Looks like Nikita Paris has gone into the number 10 role. So uh, briefly down to ten. Lucy Bond is covering back there for her captain. He has the ball now. So put them back on the pitch. Paris. Daly. Decent game at right back. She's versatile, isn't she? She can play anywhere on the field. You know she's always going to do a job. Kimberly watched it long. And she goes, just got caught there. And if he's given it the other way. She sent to high foot. Which it was. Stokes, press. Justin Press. And here's Mewis. What a good delivery. He says that this England would have four points, Japan would have four points. Better goal difference. Goal difference comes ahead of head-to-head -head record in deciding who wins this competition. Need second best in there couldn't win it. And choose the Sabra. Still chasing causes. Look at that. Exactly what your manager will want to see with quarter of an hour to go. That's good pressing yeah. by England. Really good. They went together. It wasn't just one going. Ellen White instigates it, but then the others follow that up behind and they ended up winning the ball back. I know they didn't get anything from that, but good play. Because we've seen that in the first half where USA scored and it was where they part pressed, so half of them went and USA just played the ball round them. That was much better to do it as a unit. Oh, Rachel Daly is in the same game, based in the States, Houston Dash. One of the top teams, they finished sixth this season. Rapino, Seattle Rain, one of the bigger names in the USA yep. football in Seattle. It's a free kick here, a challenge on Tobin Heath. Heath coming back, doing a defensive responsibilities. USA Women's Football of the Year in 2016 was Tobin Heath. 
He's going for the equaliser, the scrambled equaliser. And England here will be under scrutiny. And Barton needs to be aggressive and confident because they've been dangerous at set pieces. Rapino, in it comes. And again, they win the first ball and head it wide. It was Juliet's. It's a concern this for England. This time it was a, a short delivery whipped in, but just manages to get in front of, of two of the England players, Rachel Daly and, and Lucy Bronze. That's a decent header. All the power was on the delivery, so all she had to do was just try and flick it to get the direction on it. Flick it enough to get it in the goal, but it is a concern for England. It's something that has to be worked on. Caught there by Julia. England didn't actually win a free kick for the challenge on bronze. And away by Houghton in front of Paris. And now Lucy Bronze again, full of fitness, full of power, full of running. And still going, and still going. In the end, uh, she overran it. Press. Heath, Rapino onside, England narrow, oh, well, she was flagged in the end as soon as she became active and the referee hasn't seen the flag. Still up. And it goes down. The clearance from Sabran drops to Nikita Paris. Dug into the uh, England substitute, Bethany. Been in very good form for Arsenal and that wider right position. Anderson is tucked up behind her. That's good defending by the USA, nothing wrong with that. And the consternation of the Arsenal player. Georgia Stanway is going to come on for England and Ellen White will depart. Another strong front-running role by her today, Sue, what do you think? Oh, she's worked so hard. I think it's just to go off and, and have a rest. Her work rate off the ball is, is phenomenal, but also her link-up play. The fact that she will come in field, she'll try and get on the ball, let the two wide players get in behind. You've seen how clinical she was against Brazil. I think another great evening for, from her. Brilliant ball by Rapina. And here's Alex Morgan. But Manus got back and did just enough, and that 100 goal mark is just still over the horizon. I'm surprised that she didn't actually cut back in. What a great ball that is, and again, just in between the two centre halves, plays on the shoulder. She goes first time with her left foot, but I wonder if she'd have cut in field. She was through on goal, she's got the quality to be able to do that, to cut back. But Manus did well, helped her centre half partner out. Name on her shirt, of course, is that of Abby Wambach, top scorer in USA history, 184 goals. And they do have an advantage in the number of goals they, they, they rack up, number of caps they rack up because they play in the Olympics. Yeah, of course. So they have that uh, big qualifying competition and the Olympics. They just play so many games. They're together for such a long time. Phil Neville will have his team, yes, in the build-up to World Cup in France in the summer for three or four weeks, and they'll have these four build-up games beyond the She Believes. This, this USA team will be together for virtually a 12-month period. Yeah. That's the way they built up for 2015. Here's Rachel Daly. Difficult ball for me because Davison was right behind her. She looks more comfortable. Davison is a, is a left back and she does as a centre back. Sienna Davison. Just come out of college, she's just joined Chicago Red Stars. 
was the Defender of the Year in the College Cup a couple of seasons ago for Stanford University. Morgan, a little bit tired there, seen off by McManus. Well, again, those two have linked up. Well, not linked up, but they've, they've had a real good understanding. So if Steph Horton's gone to press, she's dropped in behind and, and vice versa. They've helped each other out. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time, doesn't it, to, to develop that understanding. You know, and they've not really had that same back four for a, a, a number of years. She's a film star now, you know. Alex Morgan, she's in a film, a biopic where she plays herself. It's called Alex and Me. Have you been? Will you be going? Oh, I think I'm busy that night. <laughs> they are treated as superstars in the USA, the uh, women's national team, WNT. Rapina. Heath. Always a central midfield player since they brought on that Christian Press. He's done. They've actually lost their shape, the USA. Yeah, they have. There's players going here, there and everywhere. There's a late challenge by Ertz on, on bronze. Need. That's off Davidson. She just looks like a fullback to me. She looks like a left back, not more than she did as a centre back. She's much better there. It's very athletic. But as a centre half, when she has time on the ball, and, and as a centre half for America, they want them to switch the ball, they want them to do long passes, diagonals. I don't think she's got that capability to do that on a consistent enough basis. Really, with the high cross, keeper was put in no man's land, really there. His press. Tammy Stokes has done well behind her, she's had a good game. Considering she hasn't played for England, was it? Last April, that's a foul throw, surely. <laughs> She's plopped into the feet there of uh, Mewis. The standard of refereeing in France 2019 has to be better than it was in Canada four years ago because it was a, 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 a big problem for, for all countries. There will be VAR there. It's a free kick for England. Hasn't she worked tonight? Very good second half performance for England. A good game. Yeah. It's 2 2 against the Royal Challenge. I know. Brilliant. In three or four years. Well, before for Canada 15, this would have almost been unthinkable. Yeah. Duggan, in it comes. Can they get a winner? Pace of the ball beats Steph Horton. It's a goal kick. Five minutes to go. The fact that they're five minutes to go against the world champs, the top-ranked team in the world, and they're pressing for a winner. Yeah. They don't just want a 2-2 two -two draw. David. And the fact we actually believe that they can get a winner as well. Davidson didn't look comfortable as a left back there. Sabra. Utah Royals. And Davidson again forward. clears. She used to play for Sky Blues here. I don't think they exist anymore, Sky Blues. Strange system club football. American teams pop up and they disappear. Lewis, Rapino, look tired. And back by Ertz and Miffel. She's been magnificent. Me. In possession by Alex Morgan. It's just a little bit too much zip for Tobin Heat. <laughs> the line by Davidson. Rapino, England has stretched. There's no one really in there attacking the ball. It's a goal kick, that'd be disappointing for Karen Barr. She, she kept it in and could 
Start with the release. USA substitution. Listen to the crowd. This is Carly Lloyd who's coming up. Replace Crystal Dunn. Great reception for the World Cup. Hat-trick girl. Five goals she scored in Canada. 105 she has for the USA. She's scored four hat-tricks since the World Cup finals. And yet she's, she's only really playing cameo roles these days at international level from the bench. And a couple of starts this year. Julie Taylor's going to come on. Again, though, that's a positive substitution. England going for the win. Win the ball. She wants her to, he wants her to be aggressive and win the ball. Maybe England have lapped that in the last four or five minutes since Ellen White went on. The pressure right, pressurizing now. Sabran clears. It's good pressure by Taylor and by me together. A couple of minutes to go. Me with the corner kick for England. Can they do it? Drilled the corner kick in, met well. It's a fine header away by Ertz. And six back defending the USA there, including Rapina. Can they counter at speed? Not with Lucy Bonds about. in the ground when you see in the lower tier of seats there are two higher tiers they're like cliffs I promise you earlier on a seat you remember the one <laughs> right at the end there on the cliff right at the top yeah. left hand corner is that where it is yeah thanks I'm scared of heights as well yeah you would be away from everyone there you could chat away to your house <laughs> <laughs> <on the own. laughs> yeah, just, just to follow through Rapino. This could be tricky for England in the last 30 seconds. Rapino breaking English hearts here. They don't deserve to lose. Here it goes. Looking for Morgan. England need to get it away. Jody Taylor strong. She hasn't got it though. Rapino. Cross pull back. Oh, this is well set up. Comes to nothing in the end. They were trying to set it up for the edge of the penalty for Carly Lloyd. And again, it's a good turn by Taylor. And a delicate pass out. And they've got a counter-attack on here. Here's Taylor. They've got great pace down that left-hand side. Can he release it? Tony Duggan. Cuts inside. Straight at front. But they're trying to win the game against the USA in stoppage time. He's out on her feet, Tony Duggan. Had a horrible journey out to the US. A lot of football for Barcelona this season. 27 games. Mewis. Terrific stuff here. You have a go, we'll have a go. Oh, it's great. Great to watch. Jodie Taylor there. Absolutely superb. Here come the USA to win it. Can they do it now? Mewis. Lloyd. Manasa. One time up. Manchester City teammate got the foot in. Horton under pressure. Mewis took the touch. Lifted away by Daly, who's had a strong game for England. Duggan has given it away. Here comes the crossing from Dal Kemper. And England can breathe again. It's interesting in the past because England would have probably settled for a 2 2 draw against a team like this, but the fact that they're going for it, they want to win it. Great to see. They want to send messages to Jill Ellis, don't they? And the rest of the Women's World Cup. Oi, Poloi, the top countries. Definitely. They certainly have with this performance. 
Priestman in there. Looking with uh, Phil Neville. You do hear me. They've got, they've got an overload. If she can find Duggan, if she can get the ball out, she couldn't clear her feet. And scrambled away by Choman Heath, of all people, back there defending. That was a chance for England to win it. Now the USA could do just that. Lloyd looks to play it through. Alex Morgan. And decisive goalkeeping by Karen Bartlett. Karen Bartlett did well here. You can see her position is good. She gets back, but then straight away she's off the line. Decisive, that's exactly what you want from your goalkeeper. Brave. Here they come again. This is press. Lloyd awaits. Stokes needs to make the challenge and did. And that's a goal kick. Overall, Sue, your thoughts? Fantastic performance, particularly in the second half from England. I know Phil Neville said he wanted to see this as a, a benchmark to see where England are. They've just gone toe to toe with. USA ranked number one in the world. I think they should be proud of themselves. And the fact that they're still going for a winner, I think, just shows how far we've come as a nation. His teammates up to Manchester City. <laughs> they're taking their time now. That's why you can hear the boos. And Barsley finally releases it. Still we play on. They look for Rapino. Can she get in here now? A big decision. The referee had a look. There was a coming together. And England release it through Horton. But the USA are pressing hard. And England are hanging on by the skin of their teeth. Mewis slipped the wrong time for the USA. Bronze gets in. Vital challenge. We've had nearly four minutes of stoppage time. We didn't see a board in the stadium. High up it goes, it comes off Horton, they need to get their England and be decisive, and they were. And can they break here now decisively themselves? Mead wants it back again, she's got pace, but not that much pace. Tony Duggan asked too much of her there. And that's the final whistle, and this has been a battling and stirring performance, for which England can feel very proud. 1-0 down to Rapina, Horton levelled and Paris put them 2-1 up 12 minutes into the second half. Only for Tobin Heath to scramble an equaliser, but Phil Neville's England have held the world champions and the top-ranked team in the world to a 2-2 draw. What a fantastic game of football that was. So many positives from an England point of view. You could see Phil Neville's face there, though. Potentially a missed opportunity, this against the best team in the world. Yeah, and you, you can say that, but at the same time, you've got to be proud of the performance today. So many positives, some big performances from some of the players today. Steph, I thought, was incredible. You had Demi Stokes coming back into an England team, so solid. And the mentality of this England team in the second half to actually carry on, to go and want to win the game. You're playing up against the world champions and you've just gone toe to toe. So, so many positives. But actually, looking at this England team, there's more to build on. Yeah, it's almost like they heard the, the half-time chat we had in the studio because that second half they did, they moved it up the pitch, didn't they? They really took it to the USA. Yeah, they did exactly what we told them to do. Um, <laughs> it was brilliant because, the, you know, they played their game in the USA's half and it was difficult for the USA to get out. You know, they were playing long balls and having Tobin Heath and Alex Morgan to chase onto them. Um, they weren't getting the ball down. England were getting the ball down and playing it, looking composed, making the USA chase them. So they certainly took, imposed their game on the US. And ahead of a World Cup in France, it was Paris who put England ahead. Oh, um, <laughs> see what I did there? <laughs> um, a really, really well-worked goal. Oh, it was. I mean, it's nothing more than I think England deserved at this point, but it was beautiful as far as it was kept on the ball, kept to feet, and the finish was... It was, it was just... 
you know, technically spot on. For a goalkeeper to put it right by her foot there, it's impossible to save. Yet you can't get down quick enough for it. It hits the side net and textbook finish from the Kate Paris. Two bits I like about this, Fran Kirby, that pass, mm. that's what Fran Kirby does best. And actually Nikita Paris keeping her cool and calm composure in that because that's where England's weakness have been in previous games, not finishing those sort of chances. If there is going to be any slight negative on the performance tonight, it's, it's possibly defending from, from yeah. set pieces, um, conceding twice from a corner. And the second goal here, the equaliser, it comes from an England mistake. Yeah, England have done well trying to play out, but it's knowing when to just get rid of the ball. And this is where they play into USA's hands because they press, they get the corner. And this is where England, going into the World Cup, we need to work on this. They look susceptible, don't they? I mean, you expect the World Cup, you'll have the likes of Millie Bright come back in straight away, centre-half, big, tall, physical presence, Jill Scott. I would expect to start <clears throat> in midfield again, another big tall. So I would, I'd like to think it would make a difference, but certainly they're just not clearing their lines well enough. Yeah. It is a s small fact. I mean, I know it led to two goals for the USA, but in terms of the overall picture tonight, mm -hmm. it, it, there's, it's more positive and it must give yeah. all of them great confidence and, and everybody watching it there's on great so confidence heading yeah, in. There is so many positives because when you look at it as well, you've got... A world-class right-back, the best right-back in the world, being moved into midfield. And I can see why, because Lucy had to bring that energy in there when you look at the other players, Izzy and Lucy Staniforth. Could they have done that job today? I can see why Phil's moved her in there. And they've done well, but I don't want to see Lucy Bronze in there. I can see why, but she's the best right-back in the world. And you can see she sees the spaces, she runs, and I think she could have actually been more dangerous for us today in that right-back. And But... Credit Rachel Daly, because she actually done well filling in for Lucy yeah, in that position. Yeah, I, I agree. Lucy Bronze is an option in midfield, but I don't think she's a solution in midfield. Um, <clears throat> I think it's, it's, too, it's too near to the, the World Cup to sort of see it, but I think what we saw tonight, there's too many things I think that Lucy maybe needs to improve on at world-class level to perform, and we really miss her. <laughs> Uh, right back, because she's a world-class yeah. right back. You're hoping Jill Scott recovers and Jill Scott will come slot straight back into that role. Yeah, it was, you know, these are the times to make these experiments, yeah. isn't it, in, in these kind of tournaments. And when you come up against the world's best, you're going to find out exactly what, what she can do in midfield. There. England rattled USA mm -hmm. today. That doesn't happen often. <clears throat> when you look at USA's record, the... Well, Japan opened them up and we said defensively they were there and England were brave, but they don't lose or draw many games. So that's where England need to be very proud of themselves today. It's the first time England have scored two goals against the USA, um, in, in certainly in the last five contests that they've had. Uh, and I think the overall feeling of this is really positive, you know, a real kind of like buzzing vibe after the game. But I want England to get on that bus today. Yes, you've done well, but how can we improve and want to improve and go to that next level? And carry the feeling over into Tuesday's huge game and against believe. Japan. I <laughs> believe. But it is, it is a massive game against <laughs> Japan. You know, this, is, this could win them the She Believes Cup. Well, I suppose when you go back to 2015, um, it's a replay. That semi-final, winner takes all. You've got to win, progress. This is a great game, a great matchup. First game, average. Second game, pretty decent. Third game, got to do it to win the She Believes. Ah, oh, set it up perfectly. Can't wait for that on Tuesday night. But that's it for all of us tonight. Thanks to Alex and to Rachel and to all of you for watching. It all comes down to the final game against Japan. Winner takes all on Tuesday night. Hope you can join us from all of us. Goodbye for now. And England are all over the place early on here. Back to Rapino. Oh, that's a super strike in the USA League. And it was a belter. Bergen's going to roll it. Steph Horton. Oh, what an equaliser! Oh, that's a lovely ball. And here's Nikita Paris. And what a very good goal. And England lead against the world champions. It's forced home. The USA level.